It was a good restaurant. I've always liked it. I like the atmosphere, the food, and the acoustics. So many restaurants these days use this unfinished look to the ceiling, which kills the acoustics and increases and reflects the noise level to the point where you can't enjoy a quiet conversation over dinner. It was an old house that had been converted into an upscale steakhouse. Separate rooms have been retained, so there are seven separate dining areas on two levels, each accommodating around six tables, spaced well apart to provide a pleasing degree of intimacy. It was a great place for a romantic dinner. Unfortunately, I did not enjoy a romantic dinner tonight. I was having dinner with my wife, Sarah. She and I were sitting at a table in one of the dining rooms on the lower level. She moved frantically, rarely looked at me, was nervous and afraid, but I also saw determination. I haven't spoken a word since arriving here other than what was needed to get me seated and drinks ordered. As I studied the menu, trying to decide between the blackberry filet and the beef tenderloin tornado with Bordelais sauce, I sipped my single malt on ice and eyed my wife. She was still a physically beautiful woman, smart, successful, and, until recently, a woman I would die for. But I no longer had passion for her. She did not know about the change in my attitude, but I would have ruined her plans for that evening by telling her this news, among others. John? It's me, John Archer Boyle. 49 years old and a fairly successful software executive, married for 28 years to the stranger now sitting across from me. Yes, Sarah? I sighed quietly. I... I wanted to talk to you about something. Well, this will be a nice change, Sarah. She looked at me with slight indignation, her mouth twisting in irritation. I hoped that my attitude would calm her nerves and make her finally spit out what I knew she wanted. Yes, thank you for your sarcasm, John. It always attracted me to you. Thank you, Sarah, but in this case, I was not being sarcastic. I didn't elaborate. I held her gaze as I took another shot of whiskey until she looked to her left and saw the waiter approaching. I didn't wait for the lady to order first, as usual. Instead, when he arrived at the table, I handed him my menu and ordered the filet with blackberries and Spanish rice. Sarah, dismayed by my apparent disregard for nobility, quickly scanned her menu before deciding to order a salad. Who orders a salad at an award-winning steakhouse? When the waiter left, Sarah fixed her gaze on me again. John, I've been thinking a lot lately. About you, about me. Well, about us, and... I... I wanted to discuss my thoughts with you. By the grace of God, there is an immeasurable difference between late and too late, I replied. Sorry? asked Sarah. A day late and a dollar less? I sighed. You were always ready to scream in the rain, Sarah. Shout on. You're not very helpful, John. I'm serious. What did you want to talk about, Sarah? Uh, well, I... There's no easy way to say this. I slowly swirled my glass, brushing off the condensation with my thumb and fingers on either side of the glass as I turned it. Just say what's on your mind. Well, I... I want to try a period of separation, she stammered. Nothing permanent, John. Just an opportunity for me to explore my thoughts further. I'll get separation. No. She suddenly looked straight at me, shocked. A strand of her blonde hair fell into her face as she lifted her head too quickly to hold it up. Sorry? What does no mean? Parting would be good for us. This will help me fall in love with you again and... Sarah, I don't want you to fall in love with me again. I smiled. Not a smile of love triumph or condescension, but a gentle smile. A smile that can be used to make fun of a child passionately arguing about ten more minutes of play before bed. I have no patience for your attempts to justify your bad behavior, Sarah. You need the separation so you can explore things with my replacement. So what came first? Was it your crush on me or the permission you gave yourself to find my replacement? What the hell are you talking about, John? I did not replace you and I am not looking for a replacement for you. You have to agree that our marriage has become stale, and I think some time apart will help us figure out how we can fix this and get back to where we were. Yes, Sarah, our marriage has stagnated. In fact, it has stagnated for a long time. 
and for the last two years, I, and only I, have been trying to change this. Unfortunately for us, until recently, there was only one person working on our marriage, but now there are three. Of course, these three are working in different directions. I raised my hand to forestall the objection I anticipated. You replaced me, Sarah. You cheated on me, and now you want me to agree to an agreement where you can explore this relationship further. You want to separate to explore your relationship with Dan, not your relationship with me. I won't let this happen, Sarah. Now she was angry. Twisting a napkin in her hands and looking at me, she quietly hissed. You're wrong. I didn't cheat on you with Dan, and he's not your replacement. Are you saying, Sarah, that you haven't had sex with Dan yet? But you definitely cheated on me with him, and you replaced me with him. She looked awkward. Keep your voice down, John. There is no need to broadcast our problems. Why, Sarah? You already did it. Tell me, with whom did you discuss this idea of separation? Besides me? Now she looked very awkward. Well, I may have discussed it a couple of times with Dan and... Just at this moment, our dishes arrived. And the fact that you discuss our marital problems with Dan before you discuss them with me is not deceiving me? Coming to some kind of decision regarding our marriage with Dan, and then saying, not asking, but telling me about your decision. Isn't that cheating? Dan contributes more to my marriage than I do. She was silent, seething with rage, while the dishes were placed in front of us. I winked at the young girl, who looked a little awkward herself. Sarah hissed at me again. You talk about it so vilely, John. Dan is my friend, a willing listener and advisor who has been nothing but kind, considerate, and responsive. He's someone I can rely on. He understands me, appreciates me, and does not judge me. Our waiter came over to check on our well-being. Is this vile, Sarah? You're an adulteress. You insult my intelligence, our marriage, and our past, and you have ruined our future. Dan is smarter than a boiled onion and needs to be peeled. I would have thought you would be cheating, not deceiving. Yes, thank you. My dish looks great, I chirped to our waiter, as he patiently waited for me to cut into my filet and agreed that it was cooked, as I asked. I don't appreciate what you do, John. Sarah clearly felt uncomfortable discussing this so openly. I'm not a liar. I'm not lying. And you're wrong about Dan. In fact, I think you'd like him. He's very similar to you in many ways, John. Well, I'm glad that in your mind, Dan and I are interchangeable, Sarah. You will never know how much it pleases me. I think you're crazy and for the record in every way that matters. Dan and I are nothing alike. I don't get involved in other people's marriages to ruin them. I don't indulge other men's wives, and I certainly won't play his games. You cheated on me, Sarah. You come to Dan with your problems and victories. You discuss our personal life with him, seek his advice, company, and communication. Everything that you stopped sharing with me. You are a traitor who has not yet given yourself physically, and you make me sick. I looked at her shocked expression, took a bite of the filet, and chewed it with pleasure. He put down his fork and took a sip of water. I looked up at Sarah, who was looking at me thoughtfully. Obviously, this news hurt you, John. I didn't mean to hurt you. Is it true? Damn it, Sarah. You're just out of your mind. You knew full well that cheating on me would hurt me. So you kept it a secret. You didn't mean to hurt me? Well, you weren't intentionally trying to keep me from harm either. I pushed my plate away, took out my wallet, and threw $200 on the table. Rising from the table, I drank the rest of the whiskey, looked at Sarah, and said, I won't allow separation, Sarah. I filed for divorce. We divorced. Sarah stubbornly resisted, demanding consultations and ridiculous conditions. She refused to sign divorce papers or bargain in good faith, demanding that I meet with her to discuss our marriage. I refused. I told her that I would talk to her after the divorce was final and not a second sooner. I wanted to avoid a contentious divorce so we could be civil to our children and grandchildren, but I wanted a divorce and eventually I got one. We split everything in half and I left. Sarah sent me a nasty note demanding to know why I gave up on our marriage and didn't fight for her. How do you like this level of madness? 
In response, I sent her a photo of her pleasuring Dan. She kindly sent me this photo herself three days after I left the restaurant as revenge. Two whole days have passed since our date. What restraint. I never heard back from her on this topic. I don't go on dates often. I am no Casanova. And as long as I carry my ashes around from time to time, I prefer my own company or that of my children, grandchildren, and close friends. At first, my children were on Sarah's side. They didn't understand what Sarah had done that was so bad. I felt that I had failed in my role as a father. After explaining my position to them, I asked them that if their spouse clearly stopped loving them and started a relationship with someone else, would they accept it? Would they agree to a separation so that their unfaithful spouse could explore an adulterous relationship without the guilt and inconvenience that a spouse would likely cause? Okay, I couldn't. Sarah gave up any serious attempt to resolve our marital problems, and instead of discussing them with me, she found someone else to confide in, someone else to discuss the future of my marriage with, and that was just not acceptable. Eventually, my children understood and our relationship improved, while their relationship with their mother deteriorated a little. Sarah and I are both less happy and happier at the same time. We are less happy because we are alone, but we are happier because we managed to find a way forward on our own. Sarah remarried and divorced again within two years of our divorce. No, she and Dan didn't get married and never slept together except for that one time. I never married again. I retired early and moved to the countryside, where I remain to this day. Happy that I don't have to waste energy on a woman who doesn't deserve or want it, but I miss the woman I married and what I thought we could share together. I mourned the loss of it while I celebrated escaping a drained marriage to a woman I no longer knew, respected, or loved. We had many good years, but they faded, and Sarah eventually left. I was the one who pulled the plug in our marriage, but she was the one who fired it. Marriage is hard. Divorce is hard. Life is hard.